Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, I want to show you my updated mastering workflow for working with albums. A couple years ago, I put out a video on my mastering process and immediately after I changed it, I got a custom action set up to help with the laying out of the project and the monitoring effects chain was added to Reaper, which drastically changed my workflow. So this is a project that is completed. I wanted to show you kind of the layout and how I like to work and how things look at the end rather than kind of at the beginning, starting from scratch. Uh, we can get back to that later on in the video. So the main thing is that each song for the album is laid out sequentially across the timeline, one song per track, lined up end to end. And there's a region for each song that will define my render bounds. So 12 songs, 12 regions, I'll export once, using the region manager, and I'll just do that. And all 12 songs are exported with one click. And so let's look at some of the processing. This was a not a particularly difficult project to work on. As you can see from my effects chains, the master bus has a few plugins and the uh, individual tracks mostly have EQ. Uh, some of the tracks have automation as well. Your project, your songs that you're working with, are all going to be different and they're going to require different things. Generally, they need um, multiband compression, EQ, and some limiting, and that's the bare essentials for mastering. So for example, this track here, track two, I've got an EQ on it, pretty gentle. I like the Tone Boosters EQ. I like the weighting of the graph uh, where there's a lot more space for low frequencies in here compared to um, like re-EQ. 200 hertz is here, and on this one, 200 hertz is right here. And it's just kind of a, it's easier to get to the frequencies that you use most often. On the master bus, I have processing that will apply to all the tracks. So I have clip shifter, which is just shaving off some of the uh, very highest peaks, 2 dB of the really sharp spiky stuff. I'm using Tone Booster's Real Bus, uh, and this is something that's totally optional because um, it's really going to depend on the type of mix that you're working on. Whether it sounds kind of bright and digital sounding, or if it needs some warming up with some analog character. Um, I like this one. It's a tape saturation, and it's pretty clean overall and can be quite gentle. Then I've got Ozone 5 on the master, and I'm only using the dynamics. So one multiband compressor for the entire project. And um, basically the EQs and the individual volumes of each track are going to shape what's going in here. And then stereo imaging, just narrowing the lows by 50%, and as well, just a slight actual cut in the width of the highs. To be honest, I don't remember why I did that, uh, but there must have been a good reason for it at the time. And then the third processor in Ozone is setting my ceiling to minus one, then threshold is set at minus three. So it's adding three decibels and engaging the compression at minus three. Dithering, of course, as the last step. These other plugins here are part of the loudness graph script from Heda. It's on the project because that script is loaded, but it's not something I typically use too much for mastering. On the monitoring effects chain, which I have docked beside the mixer, you can find that from view monitoring effects. Pink noise to uh, calibrate my listening level. I'll play that at minus one, and I'll use an app on my iPhone to set that to a particular level. It tends to be a quite loud level, maybe 80 dB. Uh, coming out of the speakers into the iPhone at my listening position, I'll switch that off. And now I'll know that all my changes are going to be um, not affected by level differences. I'm using the Klanghelm VUMT solo for mastering. I set this to minus 10. Tracks will peak at around zero. So I set my volumes on the items themselves uh, to hit around minus zero, no more than plus two, and really kind of depends on the feel of the album and all that kind of stuff. I have some other tools here. Tone Booster is uh, 
EBU Compact. It's another type of meter. I've got the T-Rex meter. All these plugins I don't really use that much. I do use Ian Shepard's Dynameter. Um, again, this is set at 10. And if this looks good and VUMT looks good, then I am uh, pretty good to go. Don't get any complaints about loudness with that. These other uh, things are here just kind of as I need them. The main one I use is VUMT, um, and occasionally I'm using Dynameter to reference as well. So that's the monitoring effects chain. And where that's different from my last video is that these plugins aren't on the master and I'm not going through an additional track. Like I would have everything going through a folder and they would go run through the folder and then on the master I'd only have metering plugins. And now I have my master processing plugins on the master track and I have my metering plugins in the monitoring effects chain. All these plugins, they don't produce sound other than the pink noise generator. Uh, they just um, show me visuals of what's going on with the mix. So that is kind of the post-mortem of this project. Uh, if I was to do a new project, I would open up my Media Explorer. All right, so I've got my tracks here that I would bring into my project for mastering. So let's say these are the ones that I'm going to use. In the last video, I showed you bringing one and then moving the cursor and all that kind of stuff. Uh, right now, I'm just going to drop them all in at bar one on separate tracks. And then I have a custom action here. Type in master, custom mastering setup. So let's look at this custom action. It's going to create a region from the selected item and name by the active take. It's going to set the time selection to the items. It's going to move the cursor right to the edge of the item. It'll go to the next track, select all the items in the track, and move the position of the item to the edit cursor. Remember, the edit cursor is at the edge of the last item on the first track. And then it's going to move the first item on the second track to where the cursor was, which is directly at the end of the first song. And then it's going to create a region for that one. I'm going to hit this for each track. I don't have a custom shortcut for that because I'm not doing this too often. So I'm going to select the first item in the first track. I'm going to run this action. And I'm going to zoom out here so you can see. Hit again, again, and again. And there's my album laid out. Saves a lot of time doing that. And then I will go in and edit the regions. You can see here it's taken the file name, or the take name, but that take name includes a file extension and other things that we don't need. So edit the region. This one is called uh, 1999, and that's all we need here. Go to the next one, and so on. So this takes a few seconds, um, but it's really good to get this stuff taken care of first, and then come at this project with fresh ears, and uh, and you don't have to worry about file names and all that kind of stuff at the end of the project when you just want to get it exported. So that's the custom action. I have to give a shout out to Late Night Productions. Uh, he showed me this custom action. Uh, it was based on my original mastering workflow video, but this action just saved a ton of time, as you can see. And if you're interested in mastering, I highly recommend Ian Shepard's Home Mastering Masterclass. Registration is open right now. It runs for eight weeks. It's a different song each week. He uses different DAWs, including Reaper. Fantastic course. It's a lot like um, doing an internship with him or the best closest thing to that. I learned so much about mastering from doing that course and highly recommend it for everyone. Ian is a sponsor of the Reaper blog. So if you click the link in the description, you can check out the course, you can sign up, you can support the Reaper blog at the same time. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog with Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.